then. Hi, everybody. Uh, Ken Phelps here from the Daytona Regional Chamber of Commerce, and welcome to our program, Virtual Learning, uh, Home Office Hacks, Business Boundaries in Bathrobes. And I had to do that throwback to kind of uh, Ron Burgundy, Will Ferrell, Anchorman, where you read anything <laughs> you put in the prompter. A uh, couple of housekeeping items before we start our program today. Uh, please make sure your microphones are muted. They should be, but just uh, double check that for us so everybody can uh, hear well. If you have a question or comment at some point during the program, we ask you to use the chat function for that. Uh, if you go ahead and move your mouse over the screen, the control panel will pop up. Go ahead and click on the chat button now and that will open that chat box and allow you to ask your uh, question or comment. Uh, you can choose if that question goes to everybody so that everybody attending can see it or if you wanna just send it to me directly uh, as the host, uh, either way is fine. Uh, and we'll get to as many questions as we can uh, in the time we've got allotted for the session. If you miss something in today's recording, we are or the session, we are recording it. And so you'll be able to see that after the fact, we'll upload it to uh, the Daytona Regional Chamber of Commerce YouTube channel, uh, our COVID-19 resource page, as well as our uh, other social media platforms. So uh, with that, it's my pleasure to welcome and introduce our uh, panelists for today's program. Uh, we're going to start with Teresa Rand. She is the founder and president of Rand Consulting, a firm specializing in speaking, training, and career coaching for individuals and businesses. She's a past board chair of the Daytona Regional Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much yeah. for your service. Um, she's a checkered flag committee member and serves on, serves on the board of the SMA Foundation and Tiger Bay. Uh, in her spare time, she has completed 11 marathons, multiple triathlons, an outward bound sailing excursion, and a skydiving adventure. And I clearly need more spare time because I'm not anywhere near that. Um, our next panelist is Kaylin Grant. <laughs> Our next panelist is Kaylin Grant. She's the owner of Kapow Social Branding, a social media marketing business that focuses on social media management, content creation, strategy, storytelling, and leads generation. She's the uh, longest active board member of the Volusia Young Professionals Group and was awarded the Young Professional of the Year by the Chamber and by the VYPG in 2015. Kaylin is a mom of two children under five and embraces the chaos of momming. And that's her, I think, her own coined phrase there, uh, and business ownership uh, with the help of podcasts and delivery services. So, Kaylin, thank you for being here. Um, and last but certainly not least is Johnny McGill, the owner of Johnny Nomad Media, a company specializing in professional photography and videography services on the ground, in the water, and in the sky. Uh, his goal is to provide the highest possible visual content uh, and consulting to individuals, businesses, municipalities, and brands. Uh, he's a proud member of the Daytona Regional Chamber of Commerce. All of our panelists are, and we thank you very much for that. Uh, Professional Photographers of America. He's a One Million Cups organizer and official photographer videographer for Jeep Beach. Uh, an avid lover of local charities and 501c3 organizations. He donates his time and talent to help them with outreach. Uh, in his spare time, rare as it is, he plays and referees ice hockey, plays music locally, surfs, mentors, coaches other photographers of all calibers, travels worldwide and continues his work on his personal fine art offered to the public. Uh, and I can attest to that if you've seen some of his uh, drone uh, pictures of sunsets in the area, pretty remarkable. So uh, we've got quite a, quite a strong panel with us today and we're really glad to, uh, to have you all on board. So thank you very much for that. I think this is gonna be a very interesting and valuable conversation. So um, many people are dealing with working from home for the, maybe the first time in their professional career. It's one of those things where people I think always go, oh, that would be great. I'd be able to be home and no commute and I could do laundry while I'm working. And um, I think we um, can say that's probably not the case uh, for most people's reality right now. So Kaylin, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about how long you've operated a business out of the home um, and what you've learned in terms of how to start your day off right. Yeah, so I think um, out of the panel, I am the most uh, junior of, of working from home, that is. Um, I've been working home from home for about eight months, so since the end of last August. And uh, oh, we just had someone else join us on video. That was exciting. <laughs> um, <laughs> I get distracted easily. Um, but I've been working from home for about eight months, and um, I think that puts me in the new, unique perspective in that, you know, those that are kind of just doing it. I, I was just there and making that transition not too long ago. So it's very fresh for me. And um, for me, one of the things that has been huge is mindset. Um, I didn't realize how big mindset is. Um, it certainly plays a, you know, a factor when you're working in an office, but even more so when it's just you at home, because you are the one keeping yourself disciplined. So I learned that really fast. Um, I got into the habit initially of, you know, I wake up, 
whenever I woke up, which was usually still pretty early with two little ones, but I'd wake up, I would jump out of bed and then immediately just, just start working, just launch into client work. And I would pat myself on the back and be like, oh, I'm so amazing. I got up at six and I just started working and I could bypass all the traffic and hair and makeup and all the things. And, you know, I thought that was great, but, but it actually, for me, it was not great. Um, the downside of that uh, was that I didn't really have structure or routine to what I was doing. You know, when you're working in an office, you usually have some sort of morning routine, you know, whatever it is. For me, I would get up, I would listen to a podcast or an audible, and I do that while getting ready, you know, putting on coffee, doing my hair, putting on makeup, you know, having a commute and listening to my podcast and kind of getting my mindset ready for the day. And all of those things kind of were gone. Um, and one of the things that I learned was that, you know, if I continued my routine and I kept up the habits that I had previously had in the, in the workplace, if I had a consistent time, if I set an alarm, you know, woke up early, had that alarm, got up like I was going to work, got ready, listened to my podcast, but instead of getting in my car, made the commute to my office, you know, down the hallway, um, I was more ready and productive for the day. And um, I do actually have a few friends that think I'm crazy because this literally every day I do put on makeup, just, you know, spoiler alert, I don't wake up in full makeup. So, um, <laughs> but I do put on makeup every day, even if I'm not seeing anyone, which right now is the case for most of us, unless it's in this format. But for me, I've learned when I do keep my routine, I have a much more productive, successful day keeping the routine, the habit, and the mindset. And I think one of the things that um, a lot of folks are running into, um, they're in that zone of, you know, that time frame between like, you know, Hanukkah, Christmas, and New Year's, and everyone is like, what day is it? What's happening? They, they, <laughs> everyone's just kind of floating by um, and, you know, not really paying attention to the habits, the good habits that you've set. And kind of of the mindset, well, once the new year comes, I'll get back to that. Once the new year comes, I'll, I'll start eating healthy. I will start waking up early. I'll start doing all the things. And I think that a lot of people have kind of fallen into that mindset, only it's not a week long. You know, it's a indefinite time right now. And um, the problem with that is, you know, although there's no proper way to do a pandemic, um, and no one has the true answer to that. Um, the problem there is you're breaking all of your habits right now. So when, you know, there is a shift, whether that be going back into the office or maybe more of a permanency working from home because, you know, the outcome of that could be, you know, a situation where more people continue to work from home. Um, are you going to be prepared to make that shift because you've kind of been in this blurry, hazy transition out of habit and mindset for so long, um, it's going to be, it's going to be much more difficult. So um, for me, you definitely can't, you know, I can't stress enough how important it is to just whatever your routine is to try to stick to it for your normalcy. Johnny, would you agree with that uh, assessment of having a, a ritual, a routine to start the day? I absolutely would. And I think to add to what Kaylin was saying about the morning routine and being prepared, you do have to prepare yourself to go to work. So, uh, you know, the title of this whole thing with the bathrobes on the end of it and, and people wondering what the heck that was, well, I'm wearing my bathrobe. And the reason why I'm wearing it is because I'm in my home office. I will tell you that is not what I normally do. Like Kaylin alluded to, you have to make sure that when you're going to go to your home office to work, that you set yourself up for success. Don't roll in your PJs. Don't roll in your bathrobe. Roll in as if you were going to work to meet with a client. You know, get your you know get, get your bathrobes off, get them in your work clothes, and get ready to start your day. I, I couldn't agree better. Couldn't agree more. Teresa, what about you? Did, you? did it take you some time as you transitioned from having to go to an office to operating a business out of a home office? Did, you, did it take you a minute to reestablish routines or establish new ones? It absolutely did because it was so new, you know, from working for 35 years and then retired and in the middle of starting my new business. And we were just chatting before we went live is that I literally decorated my office as an office. I'm fortunate enough to have an office in my home. I realize that's not the case for everybody, and I think we're going to talk about that a little bit. But knowing that I was coming home to run a business, 
I make sure my office looks very similar to my office did when I was working for the YMCA. I got pictures, I got books, I got all the things so that when I walk in here, I, I don't just hang out in here. I'm working. And um, one of the things too, you know, getting up, getting prepared, um, full disclosure, I don't get up and put on makeup every morning, but <laughs> if I do have a call, I do. Um, <clears throat> but I can attest that Kayla does because I've been on many calls with her since this pandemic started. She's like, geez. <laughs> But it's setting boundaries with your family as well and making sure that your children or your spouse or whatever knows that when you're working, you're working and no more than they could I'm flying in. And I know we're seeing a lot of cute pictures and all of those things. And some of that's to be expected, but you got to keep your professionalism. So it's not only getting dressed, getting the right mindset, getting out of your pajamas, all of that. You got to enlist those that might be in your house with you as well um, and set routines and, and boundaries. Let me, let me ask the group a question. So we're talking about the importance of routine and, and clearly if you're working from home, you, you're not having the length of commute that you might if you were headed to an office. And for some people that's just a 10 minutes if they're, you know, happen to work nearby or it might be 45 minutes to an hour. Can you talk a little bit about what you include in your routine? And, and if, uh, for those of you that have made this transition uh, relatively recently, uh, do you have to fight the temptation of going to work much earlier and working much later mm -hmm. because you have that flexibility? So Johnny, why don't you tee that up a little bit? What, do you, what is part of your routine when you come into the office for the day? What are the things that you've done to set yourself up to be productive that day? Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting for me because, uh, you know, we had spoken when we were starting to get this put together about my experience in working from home. And I told you about the fact that I choose to operate out of my home instead of having a brick and mortar. Uh, and there's several reasons. Number one, and honestly, probably the biggest reason is creativity for me comes at weird times. So if I had a brick and mortar that was somewhere away from the house, at two or three o'clock in the morning, I know I can walk into my home office and get knocked out what I really feel at that moment. And I don't know if I had to get into a car and drive 20 minutes to where all my computers were and all the other stuff, if I would still have that same level of creativity. So for me, a home office is absolutely a must. Um, but I think really what it comes down to for me is, again, as Teresa said, which I think is the most important point, when you walk through the doors of that office, it is your workspace. It is your office. So as far as a routine goes, I don't really have a routine specifically in the morning other than knowing the moment that I crack that door and enter into this space, it's time to be productive. It's not time to pick up the TV remote and watch, you know, some daytime TV and sit by the phone and hope a call comes in. It's time to be proactive. Uh, the, you know, you also have to think about scheduling, and I know Kaylin can talk about this, uh, scheduling your social media. Because I think in your office, when you've got a computer, and I've got two computers here, it'd be really easy for me to sit with one hand on Facebook all day long. And unfortunately, the level of productivity that I would have would drastically decrease. So you've got to pick those times. And before you walk into the doors for that day, I guess my routine would say, establish a game plan for that day of the times I'm going to attack certain tasks. And just make sure at the end of the day, I hold myself accountable to get them done. Kaylin, what about you? What's your... in the office. <laughs> exactly. Kaylin, what's your, what's your morning routine? Because you've obviously, you, you mentioned in your uh, intro, there's, there's a, a couple of kids there. You know, it's a, we're all in that period of uncertainty with this pandemic at the moment where it's, it, the, things are not normal. So what do you, what are, what's in your routine to get you ready to go for the day? Um, I'm always, well, a big thing for me is being consistent about waking up the same time every day. Um, and the whole family wakes up at the same time every day. Um, it's a family time. Um, but I get up, um, again, I start my podcast, get that for me, that just gets me in the, the mind space that I need to get to. Um, so I put on my podcast, you know, I start getting myself ready, um, hair and makeup, get the kids ready. Um, you know, we all get ready together as if, you know, it, it is just business as usual. Um, and, and for, you know, me, that really helps. Um, once I'm able to sit down and start focusing on my day, before what I would do is launch right into client work, work that needs to be done. Um, but I really wouldn't kind of structure or think it out, you know, so much. I would just start going because I'd be like, I'm so much further ahead than those people commuting because I'm starting right now. 
which is great. But for me, you know, and, and maybe, you know, not everyone is like this, but for me, I really needed to kind of structure my day or things can really easily and really quickly be forgotten or fall off because as you know, anything can happen during the day. You know, when you're in the office, you can have a last minute meeting that comes up. Um, you can have a fire that you need to put out, but the same thing happens at home and sometimes even more so, especially yeah, if you have children. Um, you know, one of them, you know, can have a situation that you have to address and that, you know, throws out the whole day. In fact, recently I was onboarding a new client and um, I have, a, you know, a, a set time we go through, we actually get on a Zoom call and we go through everything. Literally right before that happened, I had to take a child to the doctor with a temperature and it, 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 it just, you run into those things. Um, so I, what I do is I set my three priorities in the morning. These are the top three things. If nothing else gets done, they have to get done and I schedule them out. I actually physically put them in my calendar and the times I'm going to do them. I have to be that disciplined. Otherwise, I just don't get to it because it's so easy to get stuck in, in, in all the things that you're doing and have it escape you. Um, so for me, I just I have to live and die by my calendar and every morning, you know, be focused on what three things, you know, if I complete nothing else, am I going to knock off today? Because right now I'm my own manager. I don't have that boss saying, you know, what did you do? What mm -hmm. did you do? You have to do these things. You have to self-delegate and do that for yourself. Um, and I think the more disciplined you are and, and focused you are in doing that, the more you get accomplished and can get through a chaotic day and still at the end of the day be like, I did it. Okay, I'm accomplished. Um, and also to the tail end of that, um, to not continue to work beyond when you shouldn't be working anymore. Because that's something, you know, I, I'm definitely um, a workaholic type of personality and I have the tendency to just keep going. I would just keep going and going and going and going. And, um, you know, I learned that is not maybe the most healthy thing to do. Um, as much as you may be passionate about what you're doing or as much as you need to complete those things on the list, you know, it's so hard to blur the line when you are working from home between work and home because it's right there. So you have to set a time to turn it off because if you are, an Enneagram three, like I am, Enneagram, um, <laughs> you may have the tendency to just keep going and, 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 you know, that doesn't help really you in the long run and it doesn't help your family, um, certainly, because you can't be present really fully in either, in either place. So for me, it's again, just setting up the routine, being very disciplined about the schedule and, and, you know, the three priorities every day and just sticking to it. Can Lisa, what about you? Does. I know your exercises, that's a, that's a big part of your life, both yeah. personally and professionally. Is that part of your morning routine? Absolutely. Um, it depends on the day, whether I work out in the morning or at night, but it um, depends on who's teaching or whether I'm teaching. So it doesn't matter what time of day it is, but it gets done almost every day. I have rest days in there. And I, I sit at my desk with this little shoulder stretcher and I get up and I, you know, pull my shoulders and put this thing behind my back to make sure I'm not doing this all day long. And then my neck starts hurting, my shoulders start hurting. You know, we're going to have a lot of that upper body stuff. Nobody can get a massage now. It's, you know, it's just, you cannot sit for eight and 10 hours a day. And that goes into the boundary conversation. You know, start on time, get off on time. You know, Bob and I have a standing by six o'clock, we're on the back porch, you know, having a conversation. Um, <clears throat> and then like Johnny says, the benefit is if you think of something you need to get done in the office, you can just run in down the hall and do that. But you have to set boundaries to take care of yourself and to not, um, and I wanna, if I can for just a minute, Kim, to talk about those people that are, have transitioned not by choice into working from home right now, who know they're going to go back into an office, it's even more important that you set those boundaries, that you keep your routine, that you do all of those things but it's also, and we talked about this on the Young Professionals webinar that they did yesterday, don't beat yourself up if you feel a little uneasy or unfocused right now. Because if you're not used to working in an office or at home, you, you just feel a little odd. 
you know, you're not walking to the water cooler to go get a cup of coffee or to lunch. You know, I, I go to lunch every day. I leave my office, go in my kitchen and fix myself something for lunch. And then I might watch a webinar or I might watch an hour of Netflix, but I take a break just like I would as if I was at work. I'm actually gotten better of that at home than I did in corporate America. Um, but it makes a difference. I'm much more productive in that last part of the day by doing that. But don't just sit there hour after hour after hour. And if you're feeling unfocused, it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to take a deep breath and maybe take a walk around the block, walk through your house, take the dog out, whatever, and come back. It's not okay to take the entire day and binge watch TV because if you were at the office, you wouldn't have that benefit. So take care of yourself and that will help a lot if you physically take care of yourself. But don't beat yourself up right now if this isn't for you because it's not for everybody. It is not for everybody, but it's where we are right on, now. Yeah, I think you touched on an important point there too about uh, they're already, even if, you, even if you're working out of a home office by choice, there already is an amount of disorientation mm -hmm. just given what we're all experiencing. And this isn't a, you know, I think in the past when people have been uh, out of work for something like this, and particularly in Florida, it's been hurricanes. So everybody's out for the same reason that the power is not on, that, you know, the, everybody's fuses are getting short because they're, they don't have the air conditioning, et cetera. Right. Here it's a little weird because it's, it, it's everything looks normal by all appearances. You know, power's on, Wi-Fi, Netflix is still working, not a big deal. So it's a, that's a little bit... Um, I can see that disorienting, but you also touched on, Teresa, and I'm going to train, let's segue into something that I know Johnny was going to touch on, the importance of how your office is laid out, mm. the equipment that you have, the setting yourself up the space. So, now, Johnny, you've been doing this for, uh, you know, going on 20 years now in, in various uh, areas. Can you talk about how you differentiate between time at home and time at work and the importance of laying out your office? Because you made some points in a conversation with us the other day that were, I think, very valuable in terms of it's it, it's equipment set it up and treat it like an office and you'll view it differently while you're working 100 percent. i mean you summed up everything uh on on the mindset of it but i was shaking my head feverishly when uh, uh teresa pulled out that little exercise device because i think people don't realize and, and honestly people don't do it enough at work as it is anyway and I, I think in a way it's a benefit that you are at home because some of those things that you might not ever want to do in front of a coworker, some of the stretches or, or pulling out you know bands or whatever the case is you have the ability to do that while you're at the, at the office at the house but you don't have the ability to do that maybe when you're in an office at work um, one of the things I spoke about the other day that I, I really need to tell everybody about, um, my wife is actually uh, represents a national uh, manufacturer of office furniture, and one of her specialties and one of the things that she actually has a certification in is ergonomics. So I'm very, very lucky that I have an opportunity to kind of uh, have a professional come in, look at my workspace, determine how I work, and make sure that what I'm doing is not only good for the flow of my work, but it's also good for my body. Like I, I don't have to reach around in an awkward way to reach a file. I don't have to bend over to grab something that, that may hurt my back. I don't have to kind of uh, uh, reach in another direction to grab a phone. Everything is laid out in a way where it's natural and there's no awkward body movements uh, that could really kind of affect me. And it's amazing to believe in the long run it might not seem like much right now, but when you repeat that motion over and over and over, over months and weeks and years of working in the same office, you don't realize what damage you've been doing to your body. So there's a few things. Number one, stand up. Every hour or so, even if it's for five seconds, for a minute, whatever, just stand up and kind of walk around. Get your blood flowing through your extremities again. And we talked the other day about this. This is my favorite thing in the world. This is my office chair. I can sit in this, I love this thing, bounces, but I can literally sit in this thing for eight hours a day, and I'm not trying to push a brand on anybody by any means, but 
I will tell you, go out and get you the best office chair that you can afford because you will be sitting in it for a long time. And even when this whole thing is over, I think we are starting to realize companies are seeing the validity of the home office. They're seeing the productivity that's happening now outside of the mainstream offices. And I think what you're really going to start to see is an expectation that uh, maybe they don't expect you in the office as much and maybe they don't expect you on that plane going and visiting somebody as much. They might expect you to be on Zoom calls and things like that too. So I would just say get comfortable in your surroundings. Think ergonomically about your repeated motions and what you're doing. I mean, let's face it, as we all get older, unfortunately, we can injure ourselves in our sleep. It sucks, but it happens. Um, so just think about your ergonomics and make sure that you're taking care of your body while you're taking care of your business. Those are great points. I can think back to days when I used to be able to play basketball eight hours a day and then get up the next day and go do it again. And now I wake up and I'm going, what did I, you know, I pulled a muscle in a dream or something. It's a, it's a little challenging at times. Um, so talking about that, that layout, the importance of the, the, the flow, treating it as a professional space, uh, to, to throw it out for the group, how much time did you put into that thought process of, okay, I need, I need this furniture. I want this orientation. I need, you know, I need to, to set it up for yourself mentally that it's a workspace. How much time was involved in that for you, Teresa? Why don't we start with you? Okay. You've got a question coming in about Zoom that I want to answer to. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, got you. Okay, yep. Yeah, the whole Zoom thing is a, is a whole different ball game. Ken, repeat your question. Actually, I was reading that chat and thinking about <laughs> what I was going to say. Full disclosure here. Oh, come on now. <laughs> um, I mean, just thinking about that's the, what the, happens in real life too. Oh, absolutely! The distractions is you know somebody says squirrel and I'm over here. Um, <laughs> so j just thinking about the the layout of the office and how much time did you put into setting it up functionally so that it meshes with your yeah. business and productivity? Yeah, a lot of time actually, and I've redone it a couple times. Uh, I started with one desk. Now I have a different desk, similar to what Johnny was talking about. I had just a straight desk and I realized I was constantly twisting and turning to reach something. So I got a desk that is an L shape so that everything, literally I can reach everything in my office by doing this. And my chair, it swivels and it moves and it rolls and it does all of that. But I've also rearranged it a couple of times and I don't mean buying new stuff. I did switch the desk out just knowing that where to put my computer for the best, um, you know, way that I can use it, where to put my, you know, paper clips, where to put, just like you do in your regular office. And I hung up family pictures that I would put in my regular office. Full disclosure, I didn't buy this nice little artificial plant until we got into Zoom world and I realized you could see some cords and things back there. So, <laughs> so I ordered a plant. Um, but the rest of it's been just kind of hit and miss to make it, and back to what we were talking about earlier, you know, walking down the hall, kind of said to go to your office, having it, you know, fit your personality. You know, I want this to be my space where I work. I don't watch TV in here. I don't have a radio in here. Um, it, it's, it's my office, just like it was when I was the CEO at the Y. It's my office. And I don't do it makes me think of the office. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, it makes me think of you know you hear doctors talking about good sleep hygiene. You know, don't lay in your bed and watch TV. Don't lay in your bed yeah. and read a book, etc. Go in and go to sleep. It's called you can almost call this good work hygiene. You know, right. you, go, you go in your office, then that's it. You don't do other things in your office. Absolutely. In your office, so that's because uh, for those of you that are going back into corporate America, you know, you don't want to get into a new routine of doing things that you're not going to be able to do in the office. Mm -hmm. Or if you're even allowed to work in the office after the fact, which is a whole nother conversation, you're still going to be expected to be as productive, if not more productive. One of my clients last week was having some issues with her offsite employees. She'd send them an email and she wouldn't hear from them for three hours. So she called and said, you know, what are the boundaries here? I said, well, the boundaries are you're paying them from nine to five. And if you allow them to go three hours without answering you in the office, fine. But if you don't, but you have to set those expectations. People don't just know that when they've never worked at home. You know, if you have the rule at home that you got to answer the boss's email in a certain period of time or at work, you got to have that same rule at home. You know, because you 
if you're going back into the office, you want to be sure they haven't forgotten you while you're out. Mm -hmm. So, Aylin, what about you? How, how many iterations did it take till you felt comfortable in the layout of your office? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, for the longest time, I was operating on my laptop either at my kitchen island counter in a stool um, or my dining room table. And um, while both worked, um, and, and, and I'm sure there are several people that are kind of finding themselves in similar situations because they don't have a home office right now. Um, for the long term, it wasn't the most comfortable thing. Again, going back to, you know, Johnny mentioning the chair, sitting at a tall bar stool at a, a kitchen, you know, island all day, you know, for a little bit is fine. But if you're doing it all day long, you know, my back would, you know, start to bother me. And it just, it was not the most comfortable scenario. Plus, you know, if, you know, the kids were around, you know, and all of their chaos, I was kind of right in the middle of it. So once I was able to really um, set up my own office, which actually used to be my uh, children's playroom, <laughs> but I had to kick them out of here. I'm also down with the L-shaped desk. Yeah. So that's where it's at, people, and I have my swivel chair too. Um, but, you know, once I was able to, you know, actually dedicate a space, you know, it unfortunately was taking away my children's playroom, but you know, a, a dedicated space where it was just my area just to work. It was not in the middle of the, the home, with everything else going on. It was kind of my own quiet space. It, it made me much more productive. And um, what makes me happy are things, you know, as silly as it is, but I, I like to be surrounded by, you know, colors and, and things that are pretty. Um, I, I guess I don't know I'm, I'm girly, but um, I, so I like to have I I put these out now, but I, I always usually have like fresh cut flowers or like little signs and, and things that normally actually would have signs on my nose. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, really, All day. I love you know, I love cute office supplies and stuff. So having you know, like my yeah. gold stapler and tape and like how often do I use a stapler like once every two months probably i don't know but it looks cute on my desk so it makes me happy um, <laughs> but you know just having the things that are you know make me feel productive for me you know cute office supplies makes me feel productive mm -hmm. cute space and having again you know, same thing as you know what Teresa and johnny said having the functionality of having the room you know, the swivel chair the l shape to be able to to do all the things that i need to do an area that's blocked off from the rest of the house um, is definitely huge for me. And I realize though, again, not everyone has that luxury, you know, everyone has their own configuration at home. So, you know, you may have an extra space. You may not, you may be working at the kitchen island or uh, your dining room table like I did, but you can certainly make that work. You just have to kind of you know, commit to, okay, right now, this is no longer the, this is no longer the dining table. Sorry, dining is closed, uh -huh. pandemic, <laughs> and this is now the office, and you just kind of treat it as such. Make it, that is the space, that is the sanctuary, that is no longer the dining room table, dining has been canceled, and, and you now it's TV dining, or whatever you're, you know, whatever you determine, but if you make it, that is only for that purpose, and you make it as, productive and comfortable as can be for what you're trying to accomplish. I feel like you can be so much more successful when you're, you're the, your zone, your element. Yeah. Ken, I'd like to take that a little, just one step further if I can. Absolutely. <laughs> on the ergonomics of it and I love that Teresa talked about the plant in the room um, because the one thing I wanted to kind of share with everybody um, is how you look on these Zooms and, and how you look on these uh, uh, platforms kind of tells a lot about you, your business, and how much care you put into what's around you. Um, if you look at Kaylin sitting right behind her, act like a lady, think like a boss, the flowers, it tells you just as much about her business mind as it does about the way her office looks. Teresa's the same thing. She's got books all over the place. She's, it's very warm. It's very inviting. The plant in there, it's, it's alive. And uh, with Ken, with your office, it's spotless. You've got your yeah. diploma up on the wall behind you, gives you credibility. I mean, so, but these are the things, obviously, each one of the four of us made a decision before we came on today to look and see how we're going to represent ourselves and our brands 
in this particular forum. And I think it's really, really important. So I know for some people that have the, uh, the higher end Zoom packages, you can put thumbnails and frames around it. Um, I always try to wear something branded, but then again, I don't think I, you'd be surprised. If you saw me sleeping without my ball cap, I know most of you would be surprised, uh, but I'm constantly branded. But I think it's also very important because you never know who's hopping on that call. Uh, you don't know if they are on another phone call. You don't know if they're able to actually tune in and, and maybe they know what you want to say and, and they just, they need to know how to find you. So I do think it's important to, to add some, uh, some sort of branding, but again, caring about the way you look and the way you present yourself. And it goes back to the same thing with the bathrobe. It's a mentality. You just got to think that every moment that you're out there, whether you're in your home or in a regular office, you're either representing the brand, representing yourself, or, or really representing a business or your own business. So just another little thing to think about. S dress up your set. You know what I mean? Put things yeah. around you that you like and, and make it visually appealing for other people. Let it tell the story for you. And Ken, if I can jump in, I, and Kevin and Johnny, please add too. I have yet to see a virtual background that looks professional. Now, I know we were on a call the other day and Kaylin had the cutest background up. I know you have a lot of cute backgrounds, but when you're in a professional meeting, this is strictly my opinion, um, when you move, you know, that background, I mean, it's so obvious it's a background. Um, what I have seen, going back to Johnny's point, is people that have these pop-up banners, they've put them over here to their right or left, and you can see their pop-up banner as part of their background. So they're still branded, but they don't have their head bouncing in and out of this green screen thing that just looks weird. Um, the other thing is, when you're on a Zoom call, if you're in a lunch meeting and you're in a conference room, it's a little different when you're eating than when you're eating on Zoom. And and it's water, I've got a cup of coffee, Johnny's got his water, but when you're eating on Zoom, it's not a pleasant sight. Um, so just be conscious, you're not, if it's a lunch meeting, eat before or after, it, it just isn't, it, it just, there's no way to look professional, in my opinion, eating on Zoom because it's too close up of a picture. Um, using the mute button, all of those things. But um, you guys on the background, I just haven't really found anything else, any of the backgrounds that look professional. Yeah, I think I was on a webinar with um, one of Zoom's uh, mm -hmm. marketing leaders and they they had a branded Zoom background uh, going on, and it looked really good. And I was sitting there, I was kind of thinking, gosh, you know, that wonder why his is so crisp. Now, the, one of the things that I think might be the difference, his was an actual green screen. He had purchased green material, yeah. and it was up yeah. behind him. And that, it, it makes it easier for the camera to figure out where exactly right. are you, what exactly is the green. And so you don't get the... Um, strange uh, changes in the background, you know, all of a sudden, not, I've seen people in a meeting where they go to take a drink out of a cup and you see the cup and they get it to about here <laughs> and it just disappears. And it's the most disconcerting thing. Like I'm worried that they just spill it all over themselves or you know, I don't know what's happening with that. Um, but it is, I think it's important. And, and let's transition maybe to the last uh, topic here on this. And the, the difference between being in a home office versus a corporate office, like the compare and contrast of what works well when you're face to face with somebody versus what works well when you have to be in a virtual uh, right. environment like this. And I think, Teresa, you touched on one of the key things is you might go to lunch with somebody, but you can see them, you can talk to them, you might be in a break room or you might be at a restaurant having a business meeting, but you're both eating. Right. It just is a different feel than that. So I think that to me, that's one of the things that does not work as well yeah. in a home office kind of setting. What are some other things that you, you t when you think back into your professional experiences, and I'll open this up to the three of you, that, that work better in the outside office environment, the corporate office environment, and what are a couple of things that work better in the home office environment? If you're running the meeting and it's an hour or even longer, some of the meetings, 
put in a break time because, you know, people inevitably, they need to get up. They need to go to the bathroom. Um, because what happens when you're in a meeting where everybody's supposed to be participating, paying attention, if you go up there and you pop, you stop your video, well, you know, I think you're actually on your phone or you're on Facebook or you just left the room and don't want me to know it. So, you know, maybe have some ground rules if you're the one hosting the meeting and then be conscious, you know, maybe you put in the chat, taking a three minute break, I'll be right back. As opposed to just in the middle of the meeting, you go dark. And so if I'm presenting, I'm thinking, well, that person's bored, they just left, you know, <laughs> and then they pop back up. Um, so, you know, and Zoom is great, but, They've, they've coined a new term now, Zoomitis. There, there went Johnny. See, I'm bored him. <laughs> Zoomitis. And then I heard one yesterday or the day before called Zoom Butt. So talking about getting up and moving around. But, you know, it's okay, too, to just have a conference call. You know, they're back in the old days, we didn't always have to see each other, We were everybody we were talking to. There was a joke, I think I shared it with you guys, that, you know, it's like we're all going to this one bar and we're having all our meetings in the same bar, whether it's family or friends or professional or whatever. So that's another boundary. You don't have to do 20 Zoom calls in a day because it, it wears on you. It's like being in a conference all day long. So. I agree. Johnny, Kalen, what do you think works better in, the, in an outside office environment versus a home office environment? Kalen, you wanna jump in on it? You want me to go? <laughs> well, you know, I'm thinking, and at first I struggled a lot more with that, that transitioning between, um, you know, a more traditional office to a home office. It, for me, it was more about the people um, because I'm, I'm, I'm very people-y. I like being around people. I, I, I like the energy of, and the camaraderie of working with others or when you get stuck, you know, being able to bounce ideas off of other people and just having that quick, you know, like around the corner, like, hey, by the way, what do you think about this idea? Da, 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 da. And just having that really just organic in the moment, kind of on the spot communication that you really can't have in the same way when you're working from home, you know, yeah, there you can jump on a Zoom call, um, not while you're eating with Teresa, but um, <laughs> no, you can jump on a call. Um, you can text someone. There's, I mean, there's uh, obviously we all know there's a billion ways to communicate, but that quick face to face, you know, just human to human, you know, sometimes that for me was it was something that was really missed. Um, I think that for me, Zoom has been helpful to be able to see people because again I like I like to see the mannerisms and the face and and to have the face-to-face -face conversation it is different than a conference call um, it is different than a text message or an email it's a lot more warmer it's more personable um, it feels more natural for me as a human just person to person um, but that for me was the hardest just the most challenging thing going from literally being with a hundred people in a room um, to being me and in a, what used to be a child's playroom and, you know, just not really having the ability to bounce something off another human unless I'm texting or calling really quick or hoping someone will respond to an email. Um, that, I think that that's where, you know, sometimes having the camaraderie of being in an office and being face to face with everyone every day, you know, can tend to be or, you know, just feel you know, more pleasant, I guess, depending on your personality and what you do. Um, but I think there's ways around that in this, you know, new normal and virtual office world that we're in, um, that you can still kind of effectively do that. You know, to add to what Kaylin just said as well, you know, you talk about inflection and manner mannerisms. Everything that I do is face-to-face person to person. Uh, if someone calls me up about, uh, you know, doing some photography, videography, I don't throw them out a number. I don't throw them out a quote. The first thing I do is schedule a face to face meeting so we can do discovery, things like that. Um, but I will tell you one of the things for me that's always gotten me, and I'm not even talking about business, I'm talking personal here, is when you're actually going on text message or going through uh, email, you can't tell the inflection of that person's voice. You can't tell the frame of mind they're in at that moment. And I love the fact that, you know what, I think making difficult conversations 
are easier now than they were when you're just using, uh, you know, I, I know people that are more open now to using video conferencing as a tool, um, especially if you're working in a team scenario. Let's say you have people spread out in different offices in different places, different satellites, working at home, whatever the case may be. You can all jump on something together and actually work on a project together. And then those moments where you have to have a little sidebar with someone and say, hey, that's not what I meant by this. Instead of sending an email that may come across cross, it may come across, um, not at all intended the way that you did. Um, to me, it's just amazing to have the ability to really still connect with people face to face. And I think now people are more open to it. A lot of people that were afraid of this technology, a lot of people that were scared to use FaceTime, video conferencing, not because of any security risks, but just because they felt maybe they didn't grasp it well enough or, or they just felt like they were you know, inadequate technically, that they couldn't do it. Um, I think now a lot of people have really jumped on board with it, realized that this is going to be a part of the new norm, and it's definitely helped us kind of maintain a level playing field and be able to really connect a little bit better. Yeah, I would agree with that. I sat in on a webinar with uh, Zoom's CIO and some of his uh, industry, uh, peer level industry leaders, and one of the things that they talked about was from a business mindset that some organizations are now looking at maybe some of their capital expenditures on physical buildings didn't, don't need to be that top priority. Maybe it is uh, personnel expenditures or technology expenditures that uh, their, their thought is over the next couple of years, uh, it's not gonna happen just because of this pandemic or during the pandemic, but this might be the spark that really changes how business is done. And we're talking about at major corporation levels, not just small or medium sized businesses. So I think that was uh, fascinating. Um, well, I think we, we've hit some of those great key points for people. And Johnny, go ahead. you want to add something else? We were headed there already. All this did was just kind of take us up to the top of the roller coaster and give us a push. But we were, we were headed that direction already. So I agree with you. I agree, too. My, uh, my mentor, actually, she's, um, she's in Minnesota. And I talk with her every day. And it's like she's here. But she owns and runs two multi-million dollar businesses and has a team of employees. And she does that working from home and her whole staff, they work from home and they, this is how they, they communicate through tools like Zoom. Um, and she maintains these two businesses completely virtually and, and online working from home. I mean, it's amazing. And I think once I kind of wrap my head around that, I was like, wow, you know, you know, when people, you know, I first started my business, people were like, oh, maybe eventually you'll, you know, you can get a, you know, a storefront and, and have an office. And I'm like, no, why? Why would I do that? You know, <laughs> it doesn't really even make any sense for what I do. So um, I think it's totally, it is doable. It is being done. And I think that this is going to probably pave the way for us to see a lot more of that now that we're all experiencing that it's possible. You know, Kaylin, to that point, um, when I first went into coaching, uh, I, I did get a storefront. I rented a space from someone because I, I thought clients would always want to be face to face, you know, so on and so forth. Well, throughout these last eight weeks, I've done all my clients on Zoom and I just canceled my lease yesterday. I, I don't need it. Yeah. It's a waste of my money. I have a beautiful desk for sale now because <laughs> I have no room for it. And it's so pretty. Um, and Bob refuses to renovate this office again. But um, anyway, so I got rid of it. So now if you're going to be one of my clients, this is what we're going to do. Plus, and I know um, Kaylin sent me this amazing package of marketing stuff that was like 40 bucks. It was, and that's just the wave of the future. Mm -hmm. Because now, not only am I focusing on coaching, you know, executives or, or career transitions in, Jack in Jacksonville, geez, in Daytona, I can coach anybody anywhere. Exactly. And part of this stuff that I got with Kaylin is helping with that. To Because I'm sure your friend doing multi-million dollar marketing is not just doing it in her town. No, all of her clients. So the world is your client now. Yeah, I'm actually, I have two clients that are brand new, um, that both of them are in professions that are traditionally done in offices. You know, one, one is a counselor, 
mm-hmm. um, therapy counselor and, you know, um, another is an attorney. And um, we are actually transitioning them completely to online offices, you know, working from home, you know, being able to counsel, uh, counsel and set up, um, you right. know, like basically like telemedicine. Telemedicine. So, yeah. yeah. And sort of thing, same principle. But now for her, it opens her up not just to work on a local level. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as far as her licensing will take her, which, you know, is partial, well, all of Florida for one license and opens up to all of the United States for another license. So, yeah. um, I mean, this actually is a, a positive in that sense, is the silver lining, you know, that, you know, this, you know, there's so much more potential now for us to be connected and to do business outside of, and sorry, Chamber, because Daytona Chamber is the best and Daytona is the best, but, but you know, we can expand who we are working with and, and, and bring more money into Daytona. I was going to say, they're still paying us and we still live here. <laughs> and we're going to keep our chamber membership no matter what. <laughs> There's no canceling that lease. Uh, I, I will say though, but when people think about regional chambers, other local chambers, you know, it's like, that's that was a common thing with business. Say, well, we don't do business in the area, but you, you have employees and this is where you live. And, and, you want it to be a great community and that's part of building the community is part of the, the role of the chamber. And I think um, uh, in my past experience in chambers, there used to be a bit of a stigma about home, home-based home businesses yeah. as if they were less than or less not than. quite legitimate. Yep. I think this has proven uh, three great examples in our program today that that uh, certainly is not the case. Um, one last question before we wrap it up and get to a, a quick promo for a program tomorrow. Uh, Johnny, Adrian wants you to spill the name of the chair yeah. brand. <laughs> I, um, there is a company, and, and my wife does not work for this company any longer, yet I still maintain the chair because it's amazing. Uh, but there was a mid-century modern office furniture company out of New York called Knoll. It's spelled K-N-O-L-L. And this is a Knoll generation chair, and it is fantastic. I could sleep in it. I love it. Um, and it's a... It's, uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, so I, I would definitely look into Knoll, K-N-O-L-L. Uh, in addition, they do all sort of not only task seating, uh, but they do uh, you know everything from credenzas, bookcases, uh, not necessarily home office specific, but again, what's a home office anymore? Yeah. You know? Uh, so I, I really, uh, again, uh, the company my wife works for is called National Office Supply, and she deals with healthcare and higher ed. So if you've been in the NASCAR building, if you've been in any of the Advents, Halifax, you've sat on the stuff that she sells. So. And, well, thank you uh, very can much for, I, Can I plan on using the money I save from not paying rent for brick and mortar to eat out at every local restaurant in town, starting with Ronan's when we can? <laughs> I'm going to spend that entire amount of rent money the first month eating out. <laughs> okay, well, a- after you get your fill of uh, great locally owned and, and uh, well-prepared food, we'll talk about upgrading your chamber membership with those. Yeah, funds, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Good I segue. Well, I hope it. I'm, I'm, all, I'm always, I'm always. I love it. I love it. Good well, segue. Thank you all for uh, sharing your, your time and expertise. I think this was a great discussion. Hopefully our uh, attendees and our, our viewers and the, uh, watching it after the fact, are able to pull some great, uh, great tips and and be more productive. Whether the their transition to home office is is permanent or just temporary until we can right. get things rolling back again. But thank you all for your your time and expertise. Greatly appreciated. Thank you for what the chamber's doing. Absolutely. Thank you, well, thank you for everybody, and uh, thank you to Adrian for your questions and then yeah. uh, being so involved in this. But uh, guys, I tell you, I, I love each and every one of you guys. I'm so That's glad great. you're seeing your successes through this and that you're continuing to grow personally and professionally. And for me, the Chamber has a lot to do with that. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, good deal. Fun. See you guys. Thank you, thank you all for participating. Uh, quick reminder for those of you that are on, you're watching live, we have a great program coming up tomorrow morning. It's a Real Deal Discussions with State Representative Tom Leak. Um, uh, Tom served on the Governor's Task Force on reopening the economy. So we're going to have a, a Really great discussion about that. Uh, it, it's limited participation up to 100 participants because of our Zoom license. So uh, we were north of 50 this morning uh, when we uh, checked the registration. So if that's something you want to be on live, uh, don't wait. Go on right after the program and, and get registered. Uh, otherwise, it will be uh, uh, available as a recording uh, following the session. So that's coming up tomorrow, Thursday, April 30th at 10 a.m. Uh, that will be a, a Zoom call as well. So with that, thank you so much for your support of the Daytona Regional Chamber of Commerce. We uh, Hope to see you all again very soon, live and in person. Like uh, Kaylin, I'm I'm a people person, and I miss yeah. <laughs> uh, gathering live and in person at some of our functions. So uh, with that, we do hope to see you again very soon, and have a great day, everybody. So long. Bye.
Bye, you guys. Thank